It's Friday, it's the best day of the whole wide world. I'm looking over there because Scott's smirking his fucking head off at that. But we've made it, we've made it to Friday. It is the best fucking day of the week. Be who you're meant to be. Don't be anyone else. Yeah, don't fucking watch everyone on here and think, oh, what I'll be like then. Be your fucking self, people. Fucking Russell Brand. Tell us some truth, Russell. Why don't you do that? I'm sick of having, I'm sick of making him famous on my show. Russell. Yeah, Russell Brand. What do you call a bloke? What do you call a bloke with a paper bag on his head? Russell. There you go. Give him that one. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you? I'm, he's not landed yet. Give it a minute. Paper bag. <laughs> Russell. <laughs> no. oh. I pray every morning. I prayed this morning. I prayed for the guidance. You know, for a day in recovery. I prayed for today to go great. Sorry, I guy. prayed for you to look, look, take it easy on me. It's costly, but no, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> So I, pray, I, pray, I pray for this to be the best show ever because you've got the, the best two addicts on this planet. The biggest well, egos. He's second and I'm first. <laughs> the, I've got the biggest ego. And I have the humility. Of course, of course. <laughs> humility is a hard thing for me to call it, mate. But you know what? When she said, when I put you through CrossFit, I thought, I'm going to let him do it. I'm going to let him beast me. Not in the same way that he would have before. I'm going to let him beast me. And I'm going to have the humility. What do you mean? I would have done before. Shh, don't let him see us. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We are like wolves, we're pack animals, we belong in groups, yeah? When we're on our own, isolating, we're not gonna make it, never. So I, what I do strongly suggest, people that struggle on your own, get to a gym, get to a meeting, socialise with people. The opposite to addiction on our own. is connection. It's part of, so, so the opposite to addiction and isolation is connection. And that's what we don't have, isn't it? We're not going to get to the fucking gym, like oh, this. Come on, go, come on, that's see, what he's doing. He's trying see, to talk his way out of this. We're working, we're working, we're working. Let's go, Casper. That's one of my best mates, that from Coventry, Big Scott, with my son. Yeah? Hey, hey, here's one of my best mates, Owen, his dad. <laughs> <laughs> I will trust Scott with my fucking life. Yeah, I will trust Scott with my son's life. And if you rewind back 10 years, you're talking about one of the most chaotic people I've ever met in my life. Yeah. What I'm trying to say for all the people that hold on to this stigma about addiction, there's addiction in itself. I'm addiction. I love what we're doing for the public. I love what we're doing in society. So this is why this show is going to break the fucking stigma of addiction. Um, time to go and do some CrossFit. I don't need to get put. I'm fucking sick every morning. I wake up sick with the disease of addiction. And if I don't work my program and I don't do my recovery, then I'm running run the risk of not getting a day well. Yeah. Do you know? So it's not about getting poorly very quickly. I came into this fucking. I came into recovery as poorly as four. I used drugs for three and a half decades. If I die, edit the swearing out from my mum, will you please? My first train of thought every morning has always been the same, negative, because I believe the disease, alcoholism, lives in my subconscious thinking, and it wakes up before I wake up and throws a right load of negative thinking into my, my head. And no matter if I've got the, the best relationship with a new woman, um, the, the kids are, are living with me, I've got a great car, a great apartment, this, that, and the other, all them beautiful things, my disease will not go near none of them. It'll only home in on anything that it can get negative. Well, this is the next stage of my journey in recovery, you know, fit, fit, physical fitness. And my pal, what the right time has brought me along for that. So bless, you know, that's for me. That's why I call my higher power stuff for the day. You know, tapping me into this. No, I'm not a monster. I did those things because I was very, very poorly at the time. For 36 years I lived in a poorly, poorly place and didn't know that I suffered with this thing. So why wouldn't I behave in those ways? All I know is that today, through this plan, I would not do those things today. Oh, I just scored you, I just scored you, mate. Right, we're going to cut that, we're going to edit this. <laughs> I got 2 nine. you got 2 nine to edit that nice Let's one. Get that in. Oh, mate. Now that was hard work, that. So, it's been good to bring Scott McInerney to CrossFit Salford. And um, today though, it's been the CrossFit Games Open uh, where I've had to put my time in. Um, and my, my time was 2.90. My disease's time was about 3.90. My ego has been smashed by two points. Jimmy, I hope you're watching this now. Well done, you smashed me by two points. Um, 
But you know what, I'll have that, I'm 42 and I'm, um, I'm already covering at it, so I'll have that. Nice one. See you later, kids. Did you enjoy it? I love it. My head was telling me to find an excuse not to go. And I thought it was about the fear of the training. But it wasn't. It was the fear, the self-obsession about going in that gym, being big, and all you guys. And yet, you know what? I get it. Carl spoke to me about it. The unity there, the strength in numbers, the power in the group. And them guys all, all, all cheered me on, made me feel welcome. And congratulated me at the end, said, well done, big fan. And, you know, and that's what it's all about. So my head told me it was frightened of the training. It wasn't the training, it was frightened of feeling like a dick. Yeah. And I didn't, and I didn't, I wasn't made to feel like that. Being a good person, helping others, um, carrying a great message, being a good dad, being a good friend, communicating with human beings, you know, because we be, we shut off from all that, we isolate it. So now what we're saying, we get well through the recovery rooms and stuff like that and working good yeah. programs yeah, in our life. You've got to move forward into life. Yeah, we've got to evolve yeah. in our recovery. Not just stay stagnant, because when we stay stagnant, we start to get polar. When we get polar, we start to lose a power. And when we lose that power, we're fucked. So you can see me now, you know, we buffing us and that. <laughs> yeah. And this was me. I've been in Manchester. I met Shinny at the beginning of November 2016. So I came to treatment from this. So this is must be, I don't know, September, October 2016. So it's not even three years. It's two and a half years ago. Yeah. So this was me. Five, six weeks before I came into recovery. Sorry, look at that shit. No, but you know what I mean. Look at that. Look at that. That's a before, and that's only three weeks. Sorry. Three, eight weeks before coming into recovery and two years later, you know, so, you know, and I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to, that, that was me near death. And the thing is, the next stage is if I don't do something about this, I didn't come into recovery to get clean and die from overeating or from that addiction still being all over me and food, manifesting in food. And, so it's about so the balance, a, yeah. So in a nutshell, what you're saying, that anything is possible, Scott? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. For a non-believer like me, anything is possible. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm tangible evidence of recovery. He's tangible evidence. Without any ego involved, you know, from coming from that to this, that's fucking miracles upon miracles. You know what I mean? Thank You're you. an inspiration to anyone that's new coming in. That is probably coming in from the depths of hell. There's a way out for everyone, yeah, and I've seen it time and time there again. Is, yeah, and you're an inspiration, yeah, yeah. and you're what you call an example. Smithfield's detox unit. This is where I met Scott for the first time. Hey, I met mate. Scott. Happy kid. <laughs> Good to see you, bro. Good to see you for so long. Yeah. You won't think we've been trading all day together, haven't we? Just had some to eat. <laughs> I, I got a funding package and they sent me to detox up here. And I came up, I think it was November the 2nd. 2016, it was a Wednesday. I smoked drugs on the special train all the way up. It was the first day I was here, yeah. He was here. And he's like, all oh, right, mate. Big friendly face, all that. All right, like, oh, right, mate. But I talked to him straight away. In the madness, I was fucking nuts. I was absolutely, I was under the influence on the night I was here. And he said to me, you remind me of me, you do, you know. You remind me of me when I was younger. I looked at him and I thought, I must be fucking 10 years older than you, but I get it. He meant, you know, when he was in the madness, like 15, 20 years before. So he, he, he carried the message to me at the very, very beginning. I didn't know him from Adam. I just thought, this guy here showed me love, showed me love. And do you know what? I was crying out for it. And then, I think it lasted 10 days. I used in this place, you know, went over the wall, scored drugs with it, loaded someone over on a belt, wedged them back up. So I kicked off a big round in a fight, called all the staff for everything, packed my kit, and left at 10 o'clock, uh, not at 10 o'clock at night. I had to wait 10 hours for the train in the morning, right? But then it, all that all that 10 days I spent back in Coventry, rattling in the bedroom. He was on the phone to me, he was on fucking his Facebook show, him, hey, I'm gonna get him on my show one day, and well, it took him two years. He's a man of integrity, it's true to his word. He said, I'm not getting him on there, fuck like that. The first time I come to Smithfield, Scott come up from Coventry, <clears throat> I come up from Sulphur down the corner. On my first day here, I had alcohol in a vehicle waiting for me. So I was signing in to get my week detoxing here, and I was still drinking. Um, and for five days I was here, I was, I was just an, an horrible bastard. Uh, to the point where they kicked me out, and that was my defining moment. Then they kicked me out. Recovery what didn't work for me. I thought I was going to do it on my own. I went out there for another three months again, 
I used, I drank, all my old behaviours come back again. And I blame this place for saying that I had to leave. And then I begged to come back in because I seen something in this place. And it was the meetings, the recovery meetings. I seen a power in the group talks. Um, so I begged my key worker uh, from Sulfur Drugs and Alcohol team, Angela, um, she doesn't re she, she'll never realise how much she helped me and how much she's helping other people now because of what I'm doing in recovery. And she said, please don't let me down. And I begged on my hands and knees with my mum then. I was crying my eyes out saying, I'm going to die, I'm going to kill myself. I've got my kids and she got me in and they give me two weeks. And you know what? I attended two meetings every day and I knew what I had to do. That's where my real journey started in recovery. And I walked out of here with my signed certificate that I stayed for two weeks. And that's where my journey really happened. But I needed to get into a detox unit first. I needed taking out of society. Yeah, because I wasn't working well in society. Today, I'm in society and I'm working a great programme and I'm helping the masses through what this place has shown me. This is Smithfield Detox Unit in Manchester. I'm going into my second year. Two years of being clean and sober because I've been able to tack, tap into a power greater than me. But what I will say, a lot of my power is in the people. And there's one of them coming out now. So yeah, I just wanted to get that across.